So I was scrolling through YouTube the other day and I saw this video and I said, you know what, before I just watch this on my own, let me do a reaction to it. This is why Genshin Impact won't last from an addicted player. I can already see like some errors I have versus making with Genshin for sure. I assume this person should play for a while, I assume. So we'll see what they have to say. And I might learn a lot from this video. So let's check it out. It's increasingly clear to people that Genshin Impact sucks for <laughs> beginners at least. Well, maybe you think it just sucks in general, but regardless on where you lie on the spectrum of Genshin Impact enjoyment, <laughs> I think most people agree that Genshin Impact has steadily been getting worse. I've heard, I've heard that. Don't get me wrong. There's been some massive improvements, obviously, but there's still plenty of parts to Genshin that have and will continue to become bigger issues Ooh. as time goes on. Yeah. And if left unaddressed, these issues will make Genshin Impact a much worse game when it's finished. That's how, yeah. Genshin Impact ever That's a true thing. If, if they don't do something about certain certain things, then yeah. Being a finished game seems crazy to think about currently, but already it's clear if you aren't playing and keeping up with the updates as they come out, you'll have a hard time catching up. That's yeah. because many elements of the game are showing how they're flawed in the long term. For example... What's happening here? Uh, all the characters. Yep. There's lots of issues with characters. So many, in fact, that it could be its own video. But to quickly summarize, the rarities of characters is an issue. There are characters that are five stars, but shouldn't be. And characters that are four stars, Absolutely. but shouldn't be. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, five, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Did he say, is he implying that Kaya and Ning Guang should be five characters stars? characters are four stars, but shouldn't be. Now, lore-wise, Ning Guang, I feel like should be five star. But gameplay-wise, not really. You should have put Bennett up here, if anything. The ratio of four to five is becoming so problematic that there are more five stars in the game now than there are four stars because each update wow. adds as many five stars or more than four stars, except for one update that only added Rosaria. Well, I mean, we're the issue getting high though. So many five stars that only. they've had to increase right now. the number of character banners there are at a time to cycle through the five stars enough. But ultimately, that just delays the greater issue of there being too many. Genshin's actually doing a pretty good job when it comes to characters because most gacha games have like 300 plus, like sometimes 500, 800 characters in it, like immediately. So the fact that Genshin's been around for like two years and it only has like what 45 46 characters it's actually not that bad i'm number the common <laughs> idea people have is to just add more five stars to the standard banner which makes perfect sense but that too eventually will run into the issue of too many on one banner many, especially if there's like 35 stars on the standard banner and you only really want one of them yeah and that's the way. issue with the the four stars on like the five star banners like you only want one character but you keep on getting goro and chong yun around that would be to just do what the weapon banner does where you can sort of pick one exactly. five star to go for that'd be great so there's a pretty easy way to solve this character issue hoyoverse just has to start taking the steps to get there but they might not want to if they start adding less five stars and they start making the current five stars less money to get, then people will stop spending as much yep. money to get the characters they want though another intentional issue with five stars that i don't think they'll fix because it makes them more money is that some five stars are just better than others Oof. I mean, it makes sense for the Archons to be better than any other 5-star, except that Venti has already sort of been outclassed by Kazuha. Then yeah. again, you wouldn't want the very first 5-star to be one of the best characters by the end of the game, which is probably why they've made every Archon lose their Gnosis. For <laughs> the sake of gameplay, you've gotta nerf those gods so they aren't significantly better than everyone else. Then they came up with a clever story reason as to why they're weaker now. That way you focus on a better playing experience uh -oh, yeah. overall, rather than strictly on story. Or you could do the exact opposite, like they did with... Oh, here we go again. Okay. Mondstadt and Huawei were developed together prior to Genshin's public release, so those two areas right. were made to scale well together. 
However, by the time Inazuma was released, a large portion of Genshin's player base had already reached what is essentially the cap of level scaling, Adventure Rank 55. Oh, the scaling for really? Adventure Ranks has such a dramatic increase that it's very clearly supposed to be a soft limit on Adventure Rank, with a slightly harder limit at 60. But because people loved Genshin so much, they had managed to get to this Adventure Rank already before Inazuma came out. They had max level oh, characters really? and farmed perfect artifacts at the time. And because of this... See, I didn't know that. So, I guess when everybody completed uh, Liyue, they were waiting for Inazuma, and in that time frame, they just did everything. Because they were waiting for the next region. So, yeah, that makes perfect sense. They were way stronger than they were intended to be at this point in the game. And yeah. people were asking for much more difficult challenges. And, well... Did we not have a bit in the beginning? <laughs> it suddenly got harder. In my own experience, I had started playing after Inazuma had released. And I What? I played at my own pace and gradually got through the story, not in a rush to reach up to new content. But by the time I got to Inazuma, it was so much more difficult than anything before. Now it makes sense for you know, I don't know. I mean, I definitely was a little like worried in Inazuma when I got to the, when I got there because I started even later than he did. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was scary, but I felt it felt like it should have been, you know, because it was like a new island. Inazuma to be much harder story wise because that's the entire story of Inazuma. Right. It's a hostile place. You're not supposed to be there. But gameplay wise, it sucked a lot. There was pretty much nowhere in Inazuma that was safe to be. There were large portions uh, of each island that would shouldn't actively be. harm you just to be around it. Not to mention that each enemy was becoming increasingly more annoying to deal with. Yeah, but that's the challenge, though. Difficulty because I want that. Were becoming increasingly immune to Animo's crowd control, but they could also toss you around really easily if you didn't. Yeah, have I mean, I shields. want that though. So they certainly did succeed in making Inazuma feel like a hostile, uninviting place. But it also made the game feel like a hostile, uninviting game. To veteran players, I'm sure feel like a hostile, Was he? uninviting oh, okay. game. To veteran players, I'm sure it didn't feel that bad because it was just yeah, catching no. up to where they already were. Yeah. And of course, there were ways around this. You could just avoid every fight or even decrease your world level if you wanted to. But it's that true. doesn't solve the fact that the difficulty spike is there. That just means that there are ways for you to make the game easier yourself. Yeah, but the thing is about that, like, maybe it's just me, but I like that. Like, I like the fact that Inazuma proved to be a, little more, a bit more difficult, you know, especially for newer players. For older players, maybe not so much, but I enjoyed that difficulty spike. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't want to just run through the whole game, you know? Admittedly, the main issue is that the automatic difficulty scaling that comes with world level doesn't actually address how players will be scaling in strength. This is because there's two different ways to get stronger, level and equipment. Equipment is significantly more True. impactful than leveling, this equipment being artifacts and weapons. In the case of artifacts, you can't really guess, get yeah. good artifacts until much later on when you can get five-star artifacts. Yeah, that's absolutely true. That's true. And anybody, anybody will tell you that to not use your resin before you get to AR-45. Um, but yeah, but that doesn't mean you can't level up your four-star artifacts. Though. Or at least that's what everybody makes it out to be. Yeah. Maybe this was just a personal problem of everybody around me telling me not to bother with artifacts until they were rarity five. But in my experience, my yeah, artifacts exactly. barely ever made a difference until much later on. If I wasn't higher level than the enemy, I probably couldn't beat them comfortably. But I mean, of course you couldn't beat them. What was he like, level, what, if I wasn't level 24 versus level, level 88? Enemy, I probably couldn't beat them comfortably. But later into the game, five-star artifacts are everything. To the point that super low-level characters can beat very high-level enemies pretty yeah, well. Yeah, definitely if they goes up a lot. Yeah. Artifacts. There's a similar case with weapons, but it's more luck dependent, where you just have to happen upon really good weapons for your characters. Sure. Which, the longer you're playing, the more chances you have to get those better weapons. So at some point, up in like AR 45 to 50, there's a moment where your level becomes meaningless and equipment becomes uh, incredibly important. I wouldn't say that. 
I mean, the weapons are important and artifacts are important for sure, but you know, I know he just had the level one character fighting the, the cryo flower, but still, I'd say your level is still somewhat important. And at that point, player strength spikes incredibly high. World level just isn't able to cut it at that point, so they have to have a manual difficulty spike to account for it. Players had already reached this spike before Inazuma came out. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. That is. And now, new players going back through the game will have a much harder time as soon as they get to Inazuma, because they haven't been playing the game for nearly a year before Inazuma came out. Now, there are plenty of other hypothetical issues with having so many players at the cap of the game scaling already, but I... Yeah, the, the way they did that was kind of kind of messed up, because it's like, you guys are already done by the time Inazuma came out, so that... the. The scaling is kind of, you know. I think it's pretty obvious that they'll increase the cap, at least on level, eventually. Oh, they won't. Especially because there are they enemies won't. that are higher level than your characters can get already. But I wonder, maybe at that point, level will become more important than equipment. Because artifacts are already at a 5-star rarity. I mean, I, I hope so. I can't really see them adding a 6-star rarity of artifacts. Oh, no. But there's also plenty of other issues that they're facing with trying to scale. Every time. Yeah. Ah, feature Artifacts. Creep, the mortal enemy of all card game fans. If you don't know what feature creep is, it's basically when card game feature designers creep? have to add more complicated features and skills and such to keep things interesting and fresh so that players keep buying new cards. It's an alternative to just making right. newer cards better than older cards, although sometimes they can go hand in hand. But here in Genshin, feature creep has struck artifacts. It makes sense that this would happen eventually, it's just surprising that it's happened so soon. The obvious goal with artifacts is to have every single artifact set be useful in some way, and different from every other. However, right. this has very, very quickly led to extremely lengthy, convoluted descriptions for artifact <laughs> passives. <laughs> that is and a long even one. Even though they are kind of trying to keep each artifact distinct, they've already made artifacts that kind of fill the roles of previous ones. For instance, Husk of Opulent Dreams is generally better for Geo users than Archaic Petra was, right. and Ocean Feud Clam is generally better for healers than Maiden Beloved. But the thing is though, the Ocean Clam set, like, yes, it's a long paragraph, but really all it does is just when you heal, you deal damage. That's basically it. It's just explaining what it does. And Emblem of Severed Fate is generally better for everyone in the game. Okay, he's, I, he's definitely not wrong on that part. That Emblem of Severed Fate is literally like almost every character. I don't think it's entirely bad to have artifacts just be better versions of previous ones. You wouldn't really want artifacts that players grinded in Mondstadt to carry them all the way to Shnejnaya, right? And currently Well, I mean, then again, It'd be great to not have to worry about it. Like if a character is just done and they're just completely done, you don't have to worry about them. So, but I get what he's saying though. Kind I guess of presented well in the way that the passives are designed. For instance, there's a lot of early artifacts that just sort of give you elemental damage boosts, and now these. Whoa, 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 whoa! Okay, VV set. Hold on now. That's not just a simple elemental damage boost. If he means the first part, then yeah. But. Later ones are doing more specific things that are better than the more general boost for a certain element. Like again, with Husky okay, yeah. Opulent Dreams, it's specifically good for Geo characters that scale with defense. But Ningguang, for example, doesn't scale off defense, and so Oof. she still prefers Archaic Petra. But in their goal of making each artifact set kind of unique from each other, it's led to very complicated artifacts very quickly. Thankfully, two-piece bonuses are still very simple, and that's because they repeat a lot, which is mm -hmm. probably preferred. However, when it comes to four-piece bonuses, those are all completely different, and I can't really present any super strong suggestions on how to fix this other than just coming up with new, simpler passive ideas for artifact sets. My only idea would be to do something like those four-star artifacts that are like the TRs. Oh, yeah. They each have a one-piece bonus to reduce the amount of time you're affected by an element. Make like a five-star equivalent of that, although not with that exact 
exact passive because that passive sucks balls and nobody yeah. uses it. But artifact sets with one piece bonuses could be interesting since you could then have a four piece bonus with a one Plus piece one, bonus yeah. and that would allow for a bit more variety, hopefully. The only other way I could see it going again is just to make new artifacts be straight upgrades from previous ones. Maybe yeah, eventually yeah, they're gonna do, do probably elemental bonus artifacts again, but just better. That's not oh, necessarily God. exciting per se, but at the very least it forces players to keep interacting with the artifact system. Ultimately Well, the thing about that is like, you know, let's say you have the perfect Ride and Shogun artifact set, right? As emblem set, right? Or no, let's say you have like Zhang Li, like he has the perfect tenacity set. You no longer have to worry about Zhang Li, you know? But because newer characters come out, those characters will be the ones that you farm for because they'll need new artifacts, or at least some of them will. So you won't have to worry about the older ones unless you want to. Like Zhao, for example, has the two-piece Glad, two-piece Vivi set, and then he just got the recent uh, Vermilion set. So it's like they'll always give that character something new to want that'll be slightly better, but for the most part, it's going to be newer characters that you farm for. The big issue with artifacts is that players just care too much about getting great artifacts but they also kind of have to care that much if they want to beat the spiral abyss but the spiral abyss got so difficult in the first place because players were too strong already so i don't know i don't really Listen, if i can do it who has to anybody come up can do with it. all these artifacts because balancing them just seems super difficult since the artifact sets are already kind of getting better as you increase your world level and unlock mm. higher rarities, but also you wouldn't want artifacts from the beginning of the game to be as good as artifacts at the end of the game within right. the same world level, which is sort of a similar issue that difficulty had. So I guess artifacts and difficulty are actually one bigger section of Go again over time. World level is a scaling difficulty system in Genshin Impact, which increases the difficulty of the game as you get higher in adventure rank. Scaling difficulty systems are made to adapt to a player's skill. So if you're better at the game than expected, the game will get harder. So you'll have the right. same fun challenge that anyone else does. But Genshin Impact also has a leveling system, which yeah. artificially yep, increases yep, yep, yep. players' skill by just making your characters better the longer you play with them. On top of that, Genshin's leveling system has nothing to do with actually playing them. You yeah. just have to spend time in Genshin Impact with any character, and then you can level up any of your characters using the experience books. Yeah, that's usually what like, a lot of gacha games do. You know, you can just level them up because you can get anybody. So it's like, I feel like there should be a way to level up your character without that, though. Like actually like efficiently because you you can level them up without getting the books but it takes like forever and unfortunately as the game gets harder as you increase your world level it means you now have higher level enemies to grind and higher level resources to get so you can power up your characters more most of the strength in your character's kit is tied to getting five star artifacts or higher tier mm -hmm. weapons and, and talents. materials and you get all of these talents. by having a higher world level now on paper this sounds like this should work but in practice this means that you can grind grind to max level without ever leaving the starting area because the area gets harder as you level up of course i mean not really for not for every character though if somebody needs something from inazuma you can't do that in the beginning in Matsu. this could take a while but people could do it now you might think what's the point in worrying about something that is possible oh unless maybe he means no even still you can't do that if it's gonna take so long that nobody would bother to do it well people have done that a lot of people have. It just so happens that the starting area of Genshin Impact was Mondstadt and Leeway prior to Inazuma's release. People loved oh, playing I see Genshin what Impact, okay. and Genshin Impact allowed you to keep leveling up more and more, but it didn't have enough content for you to go through. Okay, so people I see. just kept grinding in Mondstadt and Leeway while they waited for Inazuma to come out. And yes, each region is made harder than the previous region, but that just means that the automatic difficulty scaling is only creating problems. Yeah, see, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that there was such a gap between Liyue and Inazuma. You know, I wasn't around back then to, to notice that. But that is definitely a flaw, for sure. You know, because everybody is 
actively playing and playing and playing and playing well with all that with all that downtime so next thing you know they're like level 90 every character completely maxed out ar60 by the time inazuma comes out if the automatic scaling if there's no content to, to play isn't actually the reason that new regions are harder than previous ones for players then all it's doing is just making older regions as hard as newer ones but there's not Hold much on. But we'll back now. previous region but that just means that the automatic difficulty scaling is only creating problems. If the automatic scaling isn't actually the reason that new regions are harder than previous ones for players, then all it's doing is just making older regions as hard as newer ones. Oh, There's not much that can be done to fix this, because Genshin Impact has live updates, and anything you could do to make it so that at the end of the game it's better, would make it incredibly unfun up until then. You could set the cap lower, yeah. but then people would just reach the cap way sooner and stop playing immediately. You could remove automatic scaling altogether, but then people would just be getting stronger and the content around them would be so much easier mm -hmm. that not having enough challenge in the game would be an even bigger issue than it already seems to be. There's another game that lives off of constant updates. Minecraft. However, unlike Genshin, Minecraft has a lot of intrinsic rewards in it. When Minecraft releases an update, people have fun with the new content for like a month. Yep. And then... And then they go back to what they've always been doing, which is just having fun exploring, building, playing with mods or on servers. And Genshin Impact doesn't have any of this. That is All very Genshin true. Has is extrinsic rewards to keep players going. Get higher level, you know, there's some stuff, but not to the same extent. Better artifacts, better characters, a new character, and the exploration really only works when there's new content added. There's nothing that's really replayable about. Yeah, you know, that's like one of the big things that Genshin everybody always clams for is like, or clamors for is like end game content, you know, like something to do. When you're already done, you know, and they do need that. Oh, Genshin Impact. The only reason you ever come back to Genshin Impact is whenever there's something new to do. Whether that be a brand new update with a new area or something as simple as just four new daily commissions. Huh. And the few things you can repeat, like domains, use resin, which is a time-locked currency, and they're not that fun to do anyway. The only reason you do them is because otherwise it's you're stronger. essentially wasting resin by not oh, yeah. spending it in time. Genshin Impact is not infinitely replayable. There is a very clear end goal to Genshin. It just doesn't exist yet. So in that sense, it might just be best to play Genshin later when all the content is out. Except that you'd miss out on all the- Everything, yeah. Okay, so this issue is intentional. The timed events are specifically designed to force you to play the game now rather than later, but that doesn't mean I won't complain about how stupid they are. Well, some of them are. Events like Windtrace and Theater Machinus are perfectly Those fine are good, to be yeah. temporary. However, many events are just important story events, and it's insane that they're only here for a limited time. Unru yeah, I totally agree with that. That is, like, awful. Like, as a newer player myself, that's awful. Like, to know, like, un unreconcealed stars, like, that should totally be permanently available. Like, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe, you know, game development is a lot harder than I think. Maybe it's, you know... Uh, a space thing you can't have that much space on the game or something i don't know but you know you think about all the people who do like the voice acting the animations who like pour their heart and soul into these into these events and whatnot and then it's just over it's just gone in like a week you know so i will absolutely agree with that they definitely should like the big ones at least like keep that stuff so the newer players can know what's happening. Reconciled Stars, which not only introduced Scaramouche prior to Inazuma, but That's also huge. showed him discovering the secret of the entire universe. Yeah. All the way back in version 1.1, both of Albedo's events, which contained incredibly Albedo. important backstory for him as a character, the Iridori, Windbloom, and Lantern Rite festivals yep. had stories that, while not important per se, Mimahuya were still very charming, enjoyable stories featuring a ton of characters. Absolutely. Some of those characters don't even appear outside of events. Now for the festivals specifically, you could argue that the side events like the flowers in the Iridori festival and the fireworks mm -hmm. for Lantern Rite can continue to be timed exclusives, but at right. least the story part should still be around. 
and unlike uh, the I agree. game style timed events, these story ones never repeat. The lantern yeah. right came Absolutely back, agree. but it had a completely different story than the first time. There are timed events that are coming out that build on the story of previous timed events you may have missed, and the content is already all there. The only thing I could possibly see that's stopping them from just slapping in these timed events as sad. quests for everybody else is possible continuity issues. I mean, again, the first time we met Scaramouche was in a timed event, and I can't imagine it'd make yeah. much sense to go back and do that, that after already seeing him in Inazuma. But ultimately, they can just slap in one extra voice line being like, Ah, oh, yes, we've met before. Because, I mean, yeah. that's what they did when Scaramouche sees you in Inazuma. And if they really wanted Wait, to, these what? that's what they did when Scaramouche sees you. In the Ballad of Number 6. Oh, wow, dude. So they changed, <laughs> they changed the dialogue if you didn't play it or if you did. See, that's what I'm saying. Like that, like I said, maybe I don't get it. Maybe there's a reason why they do the limited time stuff, but that's crazy. They should absolutely just keep this stuff in the game because of stuff like this. Like, I didn't know who Skyrimush was, and I was like, I was shocked to see him because I didn't know who he was. But, you know, for people who've been playing beforehand, they already know, and it's, it's a big moment for them because they're like, oh my God, I haven't seen him since 1.1. But for newer players, have, they have no idea who this guy is. So, yeah, I agree with that. In Azuma, and if they really wanted to, these could be mandatory quests. Because the fact that Scaramouche discovered the truth of the universe in that one-timed event doesn't matter because they can't treat it as if every player knows that. So when you yeah. meet him in Inazuma, he doesn't talk about that at all. So they kind of mess up their own story a little bit, too, for, for newer players. <sighs> okay, so... There's also some other small things that'll be bad for Genshin in the long run. Resin. It's a timed currency, so people who love resin earlier will literally just have more of it total than newer players who haven't been playing as long. Enemies. I touched on this in the difficulty section, but rather than just making enemies more challenging in a fun way, they're becoming more challenging in an annoying way. I noticed this issue mostly with Inazuman enemies, but unfortunately I have now become the 1%, so everything is easy for me and I can't really judge if the new Chasm enemies keep up that pattern. Men. Hey. There's not enough hot men. What? Dinner. Not enough men. This one is more okay. of a hypothetical <laughs> issue. It could be prevented, but there's nothing for Dendro early on. You know those artifact domains that yeah. give you the bonus elemental damage artifact sets? The Dendro equivalent will probably end up in Sumeru, the fourth region of the game. And this goes for any artifact passive to do with Dendro. So until you get to Sumeru, your Dendro characters won't have anything. Many yeah. I'll, I'll get to it after the video ends, but yeah. Menus. The menus will be too long. The crafting and furniture menus are already unreasonably long. They recently changed it so you can select each region on the map separately, but now each region is also getting an important sub-region that's taking up space, and if they keep mm -hmm. this up eventually, you'll just end up having to scroll to get to the bottom options, which kind of defeats the purpose of having this at all. I Okay, I, I get what he's saying, but this is this is like a very minor. Guess I guess they like. could also make each region like a drop-down menu with their subregions inside. Yeah, that'd be know. nice. It just seems like nice. it'll become inconvenient eventually. Every artifact-related list is only going to get worse. The enemies list in the handbook is yeah, all that that I can agree. With. That sucks. I hate doing this with my mouse to get to the bottom to get to specters. Already terrible, even with the selectable categories. I don't know why it's a single line of icons with yeah, no that does scroll suck. bar, but they're gonna have to change that eventually if they plan on adding any more enemies to this game. But that's they can they can enemies. change that for sure. I think the character menus may be fine actually, but the rest of them will definitely need some restructuring at some point. The point is, where all these issues may only be starting now, we still have at least four more regions to go. Yeah, he's so right. He's these looking, looking ahead. Will only become worse as time goes on. I feel like lots of these issues are being overshadowed by problems facing the long-term players of Genshin, which is fair in its own right, but I would argue that the problems for brand new players are a lot more important, because otherwise it will become impossible to start playing Genshin at all. 
Though to be fair, mm -hmm. it's already kind of impossible to stop playing Genshin. But even though stop. I've accepted <laughs> that I'm stuck in this relationship, <laughs> I at least want to try my best to make it less toxic. Thank well, you to all my generous all patrons. Right, well, I, I was... don't have a Patreon. Oh. <laughs> I also don't have any subscribers yet. So... Nice. Well, that that was a good video. I, honestly, you get my subscribe, my like. He brought up a lot of good points, honestly. Some I'd say I disagree with, not like entirely, but just like in terms of my experience, I disagree with. Just like based off of, you know, maybe this worked out differently for me than it did him, you know? But I will say, I think what this whole video boils down to, and not even the video, but just what, what he's saying, like Genshin won't last. The biggest thing for me is honestly just like for newer players. Older players might get burnt out every now and then, but then newer players, like, it's a good it's a good side and a bad side, right? It's like the good side is you have a lot of content to, to play, you have a lot to do, you have an almost like an endless string of content if you're new. But the bad thing is, you know, all these characters and all the other events that you miss, like, you, you miss so much, you know, and you're trying to play catch up when it comes to these characters, like I am right now, you know? So it's like, in that respect, it does kind of suck, but... There's definitely some little like minor things like you mentioned and like the menus and whatnot or that those are definitely things that should be fixed, you know, and I feel like they, they will be eventually. Um, as far as the scaling goes, like, you know, your adventure rank and stuff like that, I would hope they would increase that, you know, I hope they do. Genshin is just simply not for newer players. And they may go ahead and just like try and change that and compensate for newer players in the future, possibly. But that's what I'm getting from this game so far is you are in the best scenario if you started early in terms of like, you know, uh, saving like Primo Gems or like knowing all the events, stuff like that. Uh, you can go back and look it up, you know, if you're a newer player, but like the experience of actually playing it and knowing who Scar Moosh is and stuff like that, that's pretty important. You know what I mean? So being a veteran player definitely helps in that aspect. But when it comes to newer players, like I said, you know, it's not really all that tailored. For newer players it's, it's really not you know the further we get in genshin the more fixes there'll be the more things they'll add you know a lot of more maybe more compensation possibly you know they'll they'll get better as they go so a newer player can skip all of the faff and all the you know nonsense that was in the beginning if there was any errors or something like that uh they get to skip all that and just enjoy it for where it is it's good things about being a new player there's also really bad things for me player as well and as far as the difficulty goes honestly my first time playing i was pretty much fine you know i mean i don't want a game to be so easy right off the bat you know what i mean now in my alt account i can see the difference uh you know with like if you rush through things yeah you're not going to be strong enough you know um i do wish there was a skip on cutscenes though like to add to the small things he was talking about i wish there was like a skip button for cutscenes but once again when it comes to difficulty i was fine you know i, I really enjoyed mod stat i really enjoyed the scaling of like leeway to inazuma i liked how dangerous it got when i got to inazuma i liked the fact that oh my god i can't traverse through this island because it's gonna hurt me you know what i mean i liked all that i liked the challenge i would like you know co-op to be a lot better a lot more like efficient in terms of doing quests and whatnot and not having to quit out so the person can submit an item and then go back again you know all that type of stuff but my biggest biggest gripe like i said my biggest thing about this game i just wish the timed events were not timed not all of them but just like the major ones like unreconcealed stars that should still be in the game you know permanently like that's like my biggest thing i'd say that like those those events should absolutely just still be there because that's even more content for people but he says that he doesn't think that genshin will last from an addicted player he said so he likes the game himself he says it won't last i would say you know if these things don't get addressed it might be you know they might fall off a little faster but honestly i do not think genshin will fall like early you know what i mean i don't think that it won't last i think it's gonna last until it ends you know i think it's gonna go all the way to kenria um because it's designed to be that way you know it's a long longevity type of game it's, it's a game that's supposed to be going on for a long time like that's the design behind it you know so whether somebody doesn't play it anymore somebody else will take their spot pretty much you know so i have i have been enjoying my time with genshin I will say I haven't really been like mad or anything like that. I mean, the gotcha system, you know, obviously that's going to that's not great. But <laughs> but I can say within my experience of Genshin, you know, joining in like 2.4, 
I'm enjoying it. You know what I mean? I'm having a great time. Um, still pretty fresh, so that may change later on. You know, just like just like every game, I enjoy it thoroughly, and then eventually I kind of fall off. But I don't know. I, I feel like I think I'm gonna stick with Genshin. You know, I really do enjoy it. So for me, it's fine. But I do think that he brought up some really good points in this video. And if these things don't get addressed, it might look a little rough in the future. But honestly, I do think the game will last. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this topic. Do you think Genshin will last? Do you think it won't? What's the, you know, thing that kind of aggravates you about it? Or what do you love about it? But that'll do it for me. This was a great video by Kazukat. Shout out to Kazukat. Subscribe to him. He did a good, a good video here. I think this is like his only Genshin video, I think. But either way, I enjoyed it. And I hope you guys did as well. And with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next one.